Russian President Vladimir Putin has issued a series of nuclear threats, saying that the Kremlin will consider deploying nuclear weapons in case of aggression against his country and its ally Belarus and also in case of massive launch of aerospace attack. We reserve the right to use nuclear weapons in the event of aggression against Russia and Belarus as a member of the Union state. All these issues have been agreed upon with the Belarusian side, with the President of Belarus. Including if the enemy, using conventional weapons, creates a critical threat to our sovereignty, Putin said while addressing the meeting of the Russian Security Council on nuclear deterrence on Wednesday. Putin explained another reason for the possible use of nuclear weapons. We will consider this possibility once we receive reliable information about the massive launch of aerospace attack weapons and their crossing of our state border. I mean strategic and tactical aircraft, cruise missiles, drones, hypersonic and other aircraft, Putin said. Russia may consider the use of nuclear weapons after reliable data on the massive launch of missiles and UAVs when crossing the border, he stressed. According to the updated nuclear doctrine, aggression against Russia by any non-nuclear state, with the participation or support of a nuclear state, is proposed to be considered as their joint attack on Russia. Furthermore, the Russian leader stated the need to adapt strategic planning documents to modern realities, taking into account the emergence of new sources of military threats for Russia and its allies. We see that the current military-political situation is changing dynamically. We are obliged to take this into account, including the emergence of new sources of military threats and risks for Russia and our allies. It is important to predict the development of the situation and accordingly adapt the provisions of the strategic planning document to current realities, Putin explained. He emphasized that today the nuclear triad remains the most important guarantee of the security of Russia and its citizens, an instrument for maintaining strategic parity and the balance of power in the world. Putin said it has been proposed to clarify the conditions for Russia's use of nuclear weapons, explaining that the draft document expands the category of states and military alliances against which nuclear deterrence is carried out, and expands the list of military threats to neutralize which nuclear deterrence measures are carried out. All clarifications are proportionate to modern military threats and risks in relation to the Russian Federation, the Russian president went on saying. The Russian army fighting in Ukraine is built on lies and death. This was stated in an interview with Radio Liberty by a Serbian mercenary with the call sign Dragan who spent about six months on the front in Ukraine in 2022 to 2023. The story of Dragan clearly shows that how the Serbs, out of a sense of misplaced trust in Russia, are suffering irreparable losses in the war in Ukraine, faced with systematic violation of promises by their brothers. Human life is as valuable to them as it was during the time of Joseph Stalin, Dragan said. The Serb said he went to war because he was attracted by the prospect of helping the brotherly Russian people and the chance to get a Russian passport, which he was promised. Salary and money were not my motive, he said. Formally, Dragan signed a contract not with the Russian Ministry of Defense, but with the private military company Redut. After that, he was assigned to a unit of the 1st Sabotage and Reconnaissance Airborne Assault Brigade Wolves and the training of recruits was conducted by instructors of the Special Operations Forces of the Russian Army. After two months of training, in January 2023, the Serb was sent to Ukraine along with others. Dragan fought at Lysyshansk and Avdiivka. They were also sent to Solidar, which was captured by Russian forces in January 2023. He says he counted about 70 other Serbs during his eight months in the Russian army, 15 of whom died in that short time. Many of them were sent into battle with far less training and completely unprepared for combat. We are the only ones who have gone through the full two months of training, Dragan said. For others, it was five to 14 days. A typical example of Russian lies reported by Dragan was the case of a Serb named Emra Zonik. The media claimed that he died trying to assist the wounded and civilians 
in Donbass, but Dragan says that Zonic was a fighter. Moreover, Zonic only had afternoon training before receiving a weapon, and that's all. Although Zonic was a Muslim, Russian media reports that he was buried in Russia according to orthodox rites, probably for political reasons. After six months in Ukraine in June 2023, Dragan was disappointed by what he saw in the Russian army. In his view, business and corruption are flourishing, and Russians, as we Serbs imagine and consider them, exist in a very small percentage. He also said he understood that he would never receive the Russian passport he had been promised. Before returning to Serbia, Dragan was given a document stating that he worked for the Moscow company Monte Granja in case the Serbian authorities had questions for him. In addition to the Serbs poisoned by pro-Russian propaganda who voluntarily go to die for Russia, the Russians are trying to attract other foreigners to the front, but most often by lying.